how are you? Oh, don't leave without giving me the, the, the <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, we had a long Facebook Live. I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, I, we took the week off of Christmas. Well, if you think I took the week off, good luck with that one. For, for all those that you know me very personally and well, when people go, oh, I don't know how you work the way you do, you're only seeing the tip of my iceberg. So I thought I'd have the week off. Um, I had scheduled conference calls with one of my um, uh, people that work with me. And we were going to go over step by step 2021 because we've got the Reflex book coming out, the Mars books here, um, going into the Baby's First Years book. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on because I'm not traveling. So uh, again, God forbid I have a weekend. So we're working on all that. But I'm in the. I did the audio book for. Uh, I did the credits. I did the prologue. I did the. Um, I think first chapter and then last chapter. So my son Gordon did the rest of the audio book. So um, the, the book is out. Um, we are here. The book is, is, is here. Um, I didn't think I'd have it till November. I mean, November, January 4th. But we're finally done. Um, the audio book is in final edit. So we we did the whole audio book. That took forever. It's amazing. No, you didn't get the tea. No, you said up and said the, you no, you just, you know, or, or you get caught on a stupid word and your brain sees it one way. Um, but at the same time, it was fascinating to do. But I'm glad I didn't do the whole audio book because I wouldn't have had that many hours available to go do it. So um, uh, Audio Pro is doing it. Maro's in doing the final edits. So he goes through and makes sure there isn't a car door clicking or there isn't you know something like that that made it through to the mic because the mic is super sensitive. Um, and that's in the works now, and so is the uh, Kindle books, and possibly the Amazon. I don't know where I'm going with that. Um, but right now, I have a physical. Uh, the reason I did it this way, this is 21 New Theories of Gravity. Um, literally up until this, this launch, maybe 17 people have read the book. The file has been sec secretively held. Um, because it's, set, it's 21 New Theories of Gravity, and I didn't want the information getting out there. So now that it's there, um, I'm also pulling a patent on it. See, this is what it's like to do an audio book, a proprietary patent. There we go, I got it. Um, is, is in the works with it as well, because I can manipulate the theories. So that's what's going on in, I guess, behind the scenes. But, but again, I apologize I like doing lives better, or, or at least a video. Um, I'm about movement. I can show movement this way with my hand, uh, whereas typing, it can get misconstrued, or again, either because also your language, my language, um, even just use of English can be different. And um, I might say, again, like I'm going into a lot of physics now, so when I say rotation, a physicist is going to assume torque. Torque is, torque is based off of a linear axis, meaning a single point where they can do that. They, they somehow think that this is rotation, where I'm talking about almost like a four-dimensional rotation within. So when we move with gravity for a functional movement, a movement to take place that, again, is functional, meaning I can come up to sitting, get out of bed, feed myself. I need to oppose gravity, but I can only do that with rotation. Right? I can stick my hand out all day long. Right, This is more of range of motion, torque. Um, I can't feed myself. I can't get dressed. This is not a functional movement. And the reason why most of you are here, um, but it's not necessary, I handle all movement. The reason most of you are here because that's your complaint. Not that they're not milestoning in the sense of you're saying that you're not getting the functional movements. Movements needed for crawling. Movements needed for And that's what the, the function of it all is. Um, to look at a child with static milestones is doing a disservice to you and to them. What you're looking for, and this is what I'm going to be clarifying, so in 21 we're bringing out all the movement lesson milestones. When we're talking milestones, not uh, the baby is born and then the next one is coming to sitting. I mean, when is the last time someone here has posted about uh, the child doing scoot backs with their feet? Really important milestone. It just gets really overlooked when you're dealing with a child that going into special needs. There's these crucial little transitional milestones that need to be associated with your child's development. And when they are, when it isn't, you know, we're starting to get into to what I call deviations. Um, and typically, we wait for the child really to fail before we do anything for the child. 
I can help you and help a baby from the first moment of life. Um, I last night worked with my personal trainer. Now he's had fractured scapulas, all that. He was a professional football player. Um, I literally gave him prob probably about 10 to 15 minutes. It's really funny with professional players. They look at me, and Felipe started this way. Um, like, you know, like I'm not touching them. You know, they're used to their guys, their this, and, and, and what do I know about movement, especially about football. And um, two, I'm not in great shape as far as they're concerned, and I'm old. But um, it was, it's really amazing to see these high-end players get off the tables. And he's like, do you know what the NFL should be paying me right now? He goes, you know that trapezoid stretches I've done, and literally in five minutes, you've released my whole neck, like from all these concussions. So um, movement is about movement. And um, you'll, you'll understand the foundations of movements here and now. This is where I have to decide from here, uh, do I take these principles and do, in a sense, the same layout of book and apply it more directly to special needs? Uh, you'll get a lot of information out of here. I will sort of warn you, this is dense. This, this, is, this is a lot of science. This is, this is it's a very good book. Um, you'll see movement in a whole new way, but, but this is dense. Um, and I ship everywhere, so right now you can get it off the site and the link will be there below. So let's go into it. Um, got a lot of people that we have to cover today. So uh, Natalia, and now she's in my training um, and uh, working on being a practitioner right now. And she's working with someone with an artificial knee. And it was a good thing, again, um, having the largest library of working with, with people that I do. Um, you're actually going to get to see a video of me working with my mother. When you're working with any kind of joint replacement, First thing that you need to do again, you're still going back to stabilizing the system, but usually when you have a part blow out, usually, you know, you can have trauma to that area. Someone's talking to me right now about a nice broken tailbone that's probably a couple of years old, but you can have, um, usually when a hip, knee, um, those things and a lower back go, you have degenerative disc disease, it's because the feet aren't working well. And so now the knee's being asked to do something that, that, that shouldn't be done. Right? You, you've got, look at all these bones you have in your feet. So, I actually don't have socks on today. So, um, so, so when you're working with your feet, so like my feet, um, both my feet work really well. So I could probably do a lesson with my feet. Um, I, can, I can move them independently. I can move them, you know what I mean? Like I can work with my pinky. I'm not just up, down, whatever, or through the ankles. Right? Um, I wish I could find it. National Geographic did this amazing thing uh, with uh, ninjas. And, and this guy was on a lotus tree, and they had sensors in his feet, and it really showed how he could use and articulate each bone in the foot. Right? The same with my hand, same with my feet, and I can work with that. Most people, no offense at my age, can't move their feet. So the feet have been overlooked. Nobody looks at a bad hip as feet. And that's the first thing I'll hit with someone of age. Um, and so even though the knee now has been done, the, knee, the damage was there, please make sure you're going back in and uh, really addressing the, the feet. And then from the feet, you want the transfer to go through. Depending on the, the range of artificial knee, uh, how much metal is in there, titanium, plastics, whatever, because rotation and movement don't go through artificial parts. Um, so that's another thing to keep into consideration as to what's going on. So if there is a lot of artificial stuff in the knee, um, then you really want to make sure that rib cage is also very supple. Because again, look at the knee like a seesaw, the stress, fulcrum. Um, so the fulcrum is here and the stress within the plank. So now, now you've got here and here. So you're going to get this kind of response versus that, that weight transfer. And so you want the rate transfer to go to where the edge of the stresses are, and I would make sure definitely the lower rib cage um, diaphragm is worked out as well as the feet. Um, Thias, I know when you're working with someone and, and you're doing a movement lesson at home, the objective is to not be with low tone um, or, or high tone. Right? But we tend to, uh, most people, the mistake we make is we look at the exterior movements as a confirmation of good or bad, right? And that's what people don't realize. 
So just because your child's low tone, it's great that you decide to use the ball. And like I said, I, I teach that in my trainings. There's lots of things I teach in trainings that, I mean, I can get away with a lot with small courses, but you know, take a bit more information. Don't ever, sorry, strap a child, none of you, and I'm gonna be talking about it too. There's, there's another little baby one, again, hand over hand. And you can do this actually with, with yourself or somebody else. When you're working with a living organism, which is the human body, the body responds and counter-oppositional needs to respond to counter-oppositional. If you have a low tone situation like that, then the, that's where, again, that's why it takes a higher training level. You want to get in there and work with, with that child. But to have a child strapped, all you're seeing is, is a straight body and you think you're being doing that, but it's now no longer a functional movement. And I, again, this is where, where the book gets into this more. Think of the astronauts, right? So I'm floating, I'm floating. So what do they do? They clip their feet. They're no longer standing. They start to clip their feet or they're being held into place. And, and that's part of the reasons why their bodies break down. So in a sense, even though you're trying to, you think you're straightening or strengthening someone, you really can be taking away their muscular structure more is not what you need when you have low tone. Okay, um, Manuela, thank you so much. Um, no, I'm probably saying that wrong. I've um, um, said that more Hispanic. Manjula, sorry, Indian. Um, thank you for posting the picture of your son. That was amazing. Um, Savitri is an amazing uh, practitioner. Um, Savitri, I don't know many of you realize, she's out of Chennai. Uh, she came to me when her son Rana, who is now nine, she'll smack me if it's wrong. Uh, no, she won't. Um, but I've been seeing Rhonda since he was three and, and so forth. And um, she's probably, because she's had to edit 60% of them, has gone through every video, every training, even the Russians, even the that, and, and, and seen what has been done. And it's, it's really uh, remarkable to, again, just starting to see it, that confidence that he gets. Because again, what is he doing? He's got those transitional skills. Um, Sumana, um, I'm really concerned with the hips. We really need to, any child that has neuromuscular conditions, I don't care if it's low tone, high tone, you have a diagnosis, not diagnosis, meaning genetics or not, please have um, around a year of age, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I believe in baselines. You really need a baselines, and really from a lot of body parts. That's why I'm really big on the vision, guys. You can't have... Um, issues with visions as, as well and not know the structure of the eyes. We'll be talking about that today. Um, but there's a couple of munchkins here I'm a little bit concerned for the hip and with that I'm concerned of the left hip. Um, and that's why the, the hip um, not being as stable where you're having that and, 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 and so when the hip is, is doing that, um, going straight or is not in socket well enough, you will see the, the, the head start to bounce up more. And that's where you're not getting that crossing midline or that the child can't go into the crawl um, on the knees, uh, or crawling like this. Because again, the hip wants to go down versus into position, which again would be the crawl, right? And, and that's why it concerns me and that's where you're getting frustrated. But again, please guys, whether I see it, say, see a doctor or not, we have COVID complications. You have to do what's necessary for the health of your family and that's priority. Um, I'm just trying to read it with a glare. Um, you lost it. When a child's spine is not kicked in, um, I, I should have marked the, the pictures down a bit more for myself. Um, I. I really haven't talked about, um, and I'll do a live about this tomorrow, um, it, it, there's another munchkin that, that talks about a C-section, and I think what's going on is a, a, a foot-first C-section. Now, I apologize if it's not your child. And so the spine doesn't activate, nor does the head. And so you're getting the turn of the head. You really wanna I have a really good spine course um, for low tone, it's, it's, it's $10. Um, that and with the breathing. Why do I suggest the breathing? Because I need that rib cage to, to move. And then, so our rib cages move, and then our rib cages move. And as you see me move the ribs, 
the spine moves, and that's my pre-call. So that's why I'm suggesting the breathing and the spine course, because the spine's not moving and it really needs to be worked on. Hope. Okay. Hope, you have a medically complex child that I don't feel you're getting the help you deserve, right? First of all, you have to have an ophthalmologist appointment. I, I really feel the vision's very low with, with them. And, and until I know the structure, uh, whether it's retinopathy or something like that going on, or, or optic nerve, or it's going into um, any of those conditions. I, I need to know um, where we're at, because the vision is, is floating off, and so when, when I see that floating off and so forth, that means the muscle is not being used to the way it should. Please don't do eye stimulations, though, just yet, until we really know what's going on. Um, the NG tube is, is also bringing um, back uh, the body, and so I have lots of videos on this, but when, when I'm here, I have eye hand. When, with, when I'm here, vision, eyes, hand. When I'm back here, I can't see my hands anymore. Now I know they're there, and I can bring them in. It's, that, that's not going to happen. And, and please don't let someone tell you they're not, he's not strong enough, he's not stable enough. When, when, when you interrupt movement just to breathe or to swallow, um, that's going to complicate it. The NG tube is very heavy within the esophagus and then into the, into the, the lower stomach area. And that's where you're, you're going to see that weakness and fatigue. Um, just like I just mentioned with you, Ulossi, though, please, um, the breathing course for that reason to open up the chest and then that spine. Um, really is the first one before you go into, like I have a really good head and swallow course, but um, the priority is really to get his, his system going again. It's, it's complex. So um, I'm trying not to, to be it's disrespectful. Diana, sorry. Um, I have to get people's names and, and that's where <laughs> I'm starting to need my glasses a bit more and more than just for reading. Excuse me. So the reason I asked for a vision video, um, what should have been caught with the vision, and I, I'd still say you need a report. If you didn't get a report, then they didn't do a proper eye exam. They saw a cute little girl that followed probably like this. Oh, her vision's fine. Um, what, what should have been picked up is that um, her vision can't cross midline. So it's going with the object and going with the object, but you're not seeing where the eyes are independent of the head. And that should have happened around 10 and a half to 12 months. So when she's trying to crawl and everything, it, that's, where, that's why when I see crawling, and I know the vision's off because I'm not seeing, see how I'm same, same versus here. So here, I'm same, same, and what looks like a stiffness versus being able to do that. See how my eyes can move this way? If my eyes can move this way, then my spine can cross midline. So her spine's not crossing midline, and that's why I suspected her vision wasn't crossing midline. Um, the vision, the head and the sitting would be really good for her, and I wouldn't be uh, put off with putting doing patching with her. I do feel you need a second opinion with that, and then with the sitting and vision work on her spine to start crossing that. If that spine can't cross midline, Right? If I'm here, like put me on the skateboard and my spine can't cross midline, I'm going to grab my hands in. So what you're looking for is fine motor skills. Well, the first fine motor skills is your breathing and your spine. And they're not, and then your eyes, and they're not being activated well enough. So it can't get into her hands. And so that's where you really need to go. Um, and that's why, too, you're probably also complaining she has an proprioceptive responses. But that's because the spine can't can't go into those positions to even protect itself. Sorry, it's spinning. Um, uh, Kalinda, uh, Kalinda, when you're working with the child, and it's great you're doing the courses. I mentioned this about Othias with with the scrapping and so forth. You can guys, you can do this with each other. So here, come here, Jesse. Just give me your arm. You don't have to get into my live. Um, so if I do something like this, right, and I do hand over hand, and this is where, where again, you got to watch your ABA therapist that they're not using this technique. If I do this, I, I see I'm just going to pull her over, right? She's just going to fall. If I come underneath with movement lesson, it's like she's dancing. I can't threaten her system, and I can get her to do whatever I want. So if I want her to come here and here and back, you see how she just goes with me. But if I go like this, she repels like water. 
right? And you can give me the give me the juicy one. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> juicy water. <laughs> so same thing, if I grab this water, do you see how violent this water is, right? Now, if I'm a child with CP, and you're talking about spasticity, this is what's happening to their system, right? I'm not saying your child has PCP, I'm just going into an analogy. So when, when that happens, but if I come underneath, right, and I don't go like that, then I'm looking for this violent movement, right, and I'm underneath, then that, that water just can't get out of control. It always will go up to the horizon. So when you're, I would never do this. Now you might see me hand over hand, but I might be like this. I, I'm never on the system. So what you're doing is you're canceling the roll over while you're trying to get roll over. What you want to do is long on the leg and the child will get right over. Long on the leg and the child will go right over. Um, but you're from underneath. Just like you'd be underneath with the pelvis. You're not going to see me like this on the system. I might be like this. Right? But, but I'm drawing the movement to me. I'm not preventing it. Um, you'll see this with older people. When they're like this and they're trying to get up, well, you're, by doing this, you're trying to say, sit down, but stand up. And so the brain gets confused and will pick the sit down. And that's why they're like, oh, oh. It's like, yeah, but you're shoving your, your body back down, you know, versus getting up. Who's next? Um, anatoria. Um, a, a same... Uh, I mentioned uh, for another little munchkin, um, uh, Sumana's, um, I'm really concerned of hip dysplasia. Um, hip dysplasia is a condition where, where the hips um, are, are too, uh, they're, they're going out within the back. Um, and that's why you're getting the scoop and so forth. But, but too, even in her sitting, um, when, when you're seeing a child sit, right? No, my rubber doll is not going to do it. But, but the knees will come up. Right, but when you have hip dysplasia, the, the knees want to go down. Right, so if I was doing this, I don't know where I am on the camera. Sorry, so if I'm getting cut off. If I was doing this, right, see how my knees come up, and so if I'm scooting, my knees will come up in the scooting. Right, but when she's scooting, she's actually pressing down and and wishboning out and doing that. So I'm concerned for hip dysplasia. Um, and someone really should have her checked out uh, on that. Um, meanwhile, even though she, whether she has it or ha doesn't have it, um, the spine and sitting course or the hips course would be really good or go back to the rolling over because I really think that she didn't get her foundational um, movements that she needed. Connie, well done. So I, I, I mentioned it, and everybody was having a big shout out. And please um, take a look. Here's a mother. Okay, fine. She's. I'm gonna butcher it again. I want to say Nairobi, and then I say Uganda, but I think it's Nairobi. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, she's in. She's in Africa. But she has a daughter that has cerebral palsy, and she just wants her daughter to be better, just like all of us. Really, we do. Um, for those of us that are in the in the U.S. and some other countries, we're spoiled. We, we really have uh, services for our children that you just don't understand. I mean, one of the things that I appreciate traveling all over the world, I've been to, to South Africa five times, I've been to Bhutan, I've been to China, I've been to, to Russia, I've been to UK, uh, Austria, I'm going to miss somebody, Bahrain cut several times, India like eight times. Um, you know, when we call 911, we get somebody. When our child is ready to go to school under Article 19, federal law, our, our children are as much as an individual as, as an other person, and they get the right to schooling, and they get the right to therapies. Um, in any case, if, if there's a waiting list and so forth, and now we have COVID, we've, we've had to take matters into our own hands. But in some places, it's really rough. Um, it's, it's really hard on me too. Like I try and keep my prices very reasonable, but at the same time, you know, you're getting emails from somebody saying, ma'am, you know, what, what you need for your course is a year's salary here. Um, and, and, uh, but I'm not in places where, where my bills are different and my health is different, you know, so, so that's that. But anyway, Connie, just from doing segment one and a couple other videos online, you know, her whole thing was how to get my daughter to crawl a bit better and, and so forth. And we, we've done some patching work with her and, and gotten her on it. And 
she's independently walking at six years of age, which most places will tell you that if you're not coming to sitting and doing all that by age two, let's say, you're never gonna walk. So six years old and you can't stop her and that's great. But what's really interesting with her is just to see, even with her playing on the floor and stuff, if you watch, notice the confidence and so forth from her before and afters, it's really cool. Um, Nagy, uh, please, please work with the spine. Um, I, again, I have spine courses, but I also have a lot of free videos with baby's spine. Um, you, you're gonna wanna come in, but when you're doing this, right, you're not pressing into the baby. You're, you're letting that movement happen. Now, I'm, I'm moving the child's head. Um, I, my doll's rubber, I can't, but you know, through the chest, you would do it. You can go in through the pelvis. Um, a lot of that is also in the rolling over courses as a pre-touch, but the baby basics will help you out there and, and just continue. Um, even if I worked on Jesse right now, I'd be working on her spine. Um, it, it, it is a necessary uh, movement that's needed for all of your movements. Surprising. Uh, Gemma. Gemma, even when you have a rare condition or not, right, um, I, I would really start with the breathing course first. We need to open up the chest more. Um, her vision is not crossing midline at all, which is fine. Um, I would, for that, definitely be working on the patching, but with that, her head is just too heavy. But she's a little bit older. Now, te technically, I'd be working here with the child and just feeling the weight of the head and working around it, um, but at the same time, that's not something you can necessarily dare with, do with a three-year-old. I would definitely be getting in there with the chest, working all of that, and, and bringing it in. When people don't realize, with the vision the way it is, she has no upper quadrant vision. So when people say, just place something higher, that's great. It just doesn't always work that way, and I would work around, work with that. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, Zuzana. Zuzana, um, uh, listen, I apologize for, for, for the black and white. Um, you can't use black and white like that. You're really, and also the, the swing, the swing doesn't have a counter. I'm actually gonna do, I actually got a nice big swing for my house. And I'm like, oh, this would be perfect. I need to do a video um, and I'll knock one out this weekend. Um, when you're working with black and white, black and white really is for, maybe for Hope's child. That's where I would start to go. When you have a very low vision and so forth, you want to introduce. Now, I know Doma uses black and white. I totally disagree, especially when you're covering the wall with that because what it does is, first of all, baby can't look away from it, and two, there's no depth perception. And I can tell you right now, uh, a baby is not going to transition milestone into a lack of depth perception. Why? Because if you like me doing a rolling over course in the edge of the Grand Canyon, you know what I mean? I don't want to fall into the canyon. So that's where you want to go with that. So you really, I think part of the reason why you might be having milestone issues is because of, of the complexities, visual complexities that are not functional within the room. And that's where I was mentioning that. Um, I, uh, I would really, again, um, work with the spine, the baby basics with the spine. Um, going into that uh, really of starting to stimulate as much as you can. Um, I would be doing at least two hours a day of just those basic, the breathing course, and just some of those basic spine videos would be perfect. Uh, Look, Lakshmi, hey, if we're doing shout outs, we have to include Kartik, and then I have to run, guys, because I'm already at that, my, my witching hour. Uh, Kartik has just been wonderful. I've been working with Look, Lakshmi since Gosh, foundations in touch. She was the first one who said, my life has just changed because I turned with Turner. I had no idea my name was Turner and and, uh, and I use rotation or Turner. So um, it's funny how that works. Um, it took me about five years to learn how to say her name and she's probably still laughing right now because I'm, I'm messing it up. Um, but but uh, Kartik is just really doing well. I saw him um, this time almost last year in India, but all that's gone because of COVID, but she continues to do uh, the segment training. She's learning how to be a practitioner because she really feels that all, all the children in India and everywhere need the, need the work and she's she's at it. She's good friends of mine and Savitri's and, and we have a good clan, Menemi, and we all take care of each other. 
Guys, if I don't see you between now and New Year's, I'm sure I will. Please have a joyous New Year. I know we all want 2021 to be a little bit different. However, we really have to start getting practical. Our lives are changing. This is not a one-off event, and we've got to adjust. And I've said it before, and this is why we've cranked this year up a little bit less, and, and everybody needs a hand out. Uh, Claudia, Felipe, Jesse, Sylvia, Betsy, um, the office grows. Gordon, my son, is here on, on intern. But really, guys, um, our kids are going to be the last ones getting back into school uh, because of everything. And now if they make it, you know, they'll, they're continuing to make restrictions. Um, please take a moment and start seeing how you're going to schedule this into your lives. Um, I do, now I do have a whole webinar. It used to just be a sort of, no offense, a cheesy, not a cheesy PDF, but just a simple PDF, five successful tips to your home program. And now it's a whole webinar. Please, if you haven't done that and you need to, to really establish your home program, please look into that. Thanks, guys. Happy New Year.